Welcome to today's teaching. My name is Glenn Ruppel, and we're going to be learning about a win-win-win strategy for nonprofits, churches, ministries, nonprofits, how they can purchase real estate and have a very, very favorable outcome. We're going to be learning about how sellers of real estate can avoid the capital gains tax, get a tax deduction, and actually pass the full value uh, to their heirs also. So it's a win for the family, a win for the seller, and a win for the buyer. So let's look at the seller side of the transaction first. And, and again, these are hypothetical uh, analysis. I'm just trying to, so we can understand the flow uh, of the way this works. And, and so the situations obviously change with each uh, particular owner of real estate or a business or whatever. But in this situation, we're going to be talking about real estate specifically here. And in this case here, we have a zero cost basis. Somebody may have depreciated the real estate. Uh, we're not showing land value. So let's, let's not look at that. But what we're looking at is just the cost basis is zero. So what we've got is a capital gain of $200,000 or 20%. Again, that can change based upon the state uh, that one's located in. But we're just using uh, easy numbers to work with here. So what we've, we have, and, and many times the reason people don't sell the real estate is because they don't want to pay the capital gains tax. So we have a situation here that if they sell it, they pay the tax, they have $800,000 left over. Well, what if there's a way that you could sell the real estate and not pay the capital gains tax? What we do is that we transfer the, 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 the million dollar real estate over into a tax exempt trust. We sell it inside of the tax exempt trust, and we avoid the capital gains tax. We have the full value of the million dollars working for us. And in this case here, we're using a 75% uh, yield uh, that we'd be paying out of, of the trust. And so what we've done is we've avoided that capital gains tax on this. Now, what do you think the IRS would think about this type of transaction. You think they'd like it or not like it? Well, the obvious answer would be, hey, they're not going to like this. But you know what? They really like this transaction so much that they're actually going to give a tax incentive of $300,000 to do the transaction. We're going, why would they do that? Well, before I answer that question, let's just look at the buyer's side of this trend, excuse me, the seller's side of this transaction. They're selling the real estate. They uh, have uh, avoided the capital gains tax. They have the full million dollars working for them. And they have a tax deduction of $300,000 also. So what happens here is this a uh, million dollars is earning 5%. It's paying to them $50,000 a year of income. And this income is based upon a couple of things. Uh, the tax deduction is based upon what's called the federal rate. Uh, it's also based upon the, 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 the life expectancy, the ages of the income beneficiaries. And then it's based upon the distribution rate, the income rate that's paid out of the trust. But while they're alive, what they've got is all their money working for them, uh, invested, uh, assuming here to earn 5%. And, and what they've got is also a $300,000 tax deduction that they get to use the tax savings off of that. So they have is a pension-like income for the rest of their lives, and they've avoided the capital gains tax. So why would the IRS give the... The, uh, the seller of the real estate, uh, a $300,000 tax deduction, avoid the income tax here and actually give them a tax deduction. Well, the reason is that when uh, the sellers of the real estate both pass away, when the last one dies, the remainder interest, whatever's remaining in this trust, will go down to a charitable beneficiary. It's got to go to a non-profit 
entity, much like a church, a ministry, or, or some nonprofit. So what's the problem with the family or the heirs of the family? Well, the heirs of the family didn't get the money. It went to charity. So we're going to solve for that in a second. But let's go back up here. While they're alive, they got the full value of the million dollars working for them, whereas if it sold the real estate, paid the tax, they'd only have $800,000 working for them, and the heirs would only inherit that value. Whereas here, we have the full million dollars working for uh, for them, plus they have a $300,000 uh, uh, tax deduction. And this tax deduction is based upon the present value of the future gift based upon their age, the AFR rate, and the payout of the trust. So now let's look at the buyer's side of this transaction. So now we have is a church buying uh, the, the real estate uh, from the charitable trust, and they go out and get uh, their own uh, bank financing, uh, a total of a million dollars, purchase the real estate, and now we have a million dollars in uh, the tax exempt trust, the charitable trust, that is invested uh, here, assuming 5%, paying 5% to the income beneficiaries. Now, one of the things that the church or the nonprofit will want to do is, is asked to be named in the charitable trust as the remainder beneficiary. So at the end of the trust, when both of the income beneficiaries finally pass away, the remainder in here goes back to the church, the ministry, or to the nonprofit. So they've purchased the property that pretty much we could say anything then uh, that they paid also could potentially come back to them. Uh, the full value, a reduced value, whatever, but but what a big benefit that is to the church, uh, the ministry, and the nonprofit. And because the charitable trust does need to name a charitable beneficiary, why not name the church that is actually buying the property as that beneficiary, as that charitable beneficiary? So, so that's the buyer side, we looked at the seller side, but now we've not solved for the family side. The heirs effectively were disinherited through this transaction because uh, the money was given away at the death of, let's assume, the parents here in this situation. So how do we solve for that? Well, we have $300,000 of tax deductions, uh, depending upon the tax bracket of the people, assuming a 33% bracket, that could mean as much as $100,000 of tax savings. And they get to use these tax deductions for the current year plus carry them forward for five years. So you could use some of the tax savings and maybe some of the income here off of the trust. And what can you purchase that would create a million dollars when the last, there's two income beneficiaries here, when the last beneficiary pass away, passes away. So what can you purchase that would create a million dollars? So what you can do is create a, a, a million dollar insurance trust or wealth replacement trust that creates a million dollars of last to die life insurance that goes to the heirs uh, when the income beneficiaries pass away. So now the heirs get a million dollars. The the sellers of the real estate have avoided the income tax. They're getting more income than they probably could have gotten if they'd sold and paid the tax. And now they have the tax savings that the government has given them that helps them purchase uh, the life insurance policy on two lives, not one life, but two lives, which reduces the cost of the premium. But this money, this million dollars, goes income tax-free and estate tax-free and can be set up in a trust that can go on generationally to bless future generations. So what we've got is a win to the family. We've got a win to the sellers of the real estate because of avoiding the income tax, they got a charitable deduction, and they have a pension-like income, then we have a win to the buyer, uh, which is the church, ministry, or a nonprofit that is purchased in the real estate, and they get named also as the remainder charitable beneficiary of the charitable trust. 
So what we've got then is the win-win-win strategy for selling and buying real estate. And so what it looks like to the, the seller, their advantages is that they reduce and eliminate the capital gains tax on the sale of the real estate. They receive a charitable tax deduction. They receive the lifetime income for, for their, their life and a spouse life. Uh, it reduces the stress of the active management of the real estate. Uh, and more than likely, the seller would get a higher uh, price, more towards the, uh, the fair market value of the real estate. The family advantages is, is the potential uh, potential to receive greater inheritance. If it's sold and paid the tax, now they can get a greater inheritance and have liquidity. The possibility of preserving a legacy for children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren through the use of trust, properly designed trust, and then reduce the stress of selling uh, the real estate later by selling it now and providing liquidity to the family. And then the buyer advantages would be that the charitable trust would be named uh, as, as the charitable beneficiary. The buyer is the charitable beneficiary. The church, the ministry uh, uh, would be the, uh, the, uh, the charitable beneficiary. So some things that, that just need to be understood and also disclosed also is that the risk uh, is, is the seller uh, the, the potential buyer and the seller cannot enter into a binding agreement, uh, which uh, the, the, the seller has to put the money into the charitable trust, and then the charitable trust enters into a binding agreement with, with the, the buyer. They cannot have a prearranged sale. Uh, the IRS would look at that. Uh, as and could potentially disallow the charitable the tax deduction. The seller of the property needs the seller needs to have the property be totally tax free to be able to transfer it into the charitable trust into that uh, tax exempt trust. And if if the seller is considering replacing uh, the assets through insurance and using a trust there, uh, it is a good idea. Uh, best practice idea to go out and get an offer directly through the underwriting of the insurance on the two life type of trust uh, to people to see what the pricing really would be because you won't know until you go through the metal, medical underwriting that's something that the insurance company does at no cost and they would make an actual offer then you'll know more what the cost would look like then from there you can go draft uh, the charitable remainder trust have most of the facts there available to you. Uh, you'd want what's called a flip CRT trust. Uh, the flip is the event when the property is sold. If the property is not purchased by the buyer, you still get the charitable tax deduction, and then you sell it to another buyer. Uh, you have the tax deduction. Uh, you're not required to make the income distributions except what the, the income is coming from uh, the real estate right now, then it flips to the to the standard, what we call a standard charitable remainder trust, and the 5% is paid out because there's liquidity now because uh, the, the real estate has been sold, and that income would be paid out. Then the real estate also needs to have a qualified appraisal so that uh, to, to, that we're not overstating the value to get the charitable tax deduction. And then charitable tax deduction, again, is based upon the federal rate, the ages of the income beneficiaries, and also based upon the distribution rate coming out of the charitable trust. The income distribution also coming out is also something that we need to understand is based upon the investments inside of the trust, the investment allocation, uh, the styles, how it's invested, and it's based upon market conditions which can fluctuate up or down, and there's no guarantee in the investment results, and even past performance does not guarantee future results. And so the benefit to the, to, to the non uh, uh, the nonprofit buyer, the church, the ministry, the nonprofit needs to obtain their own fa financing as a best practice. Also, the nonprofit uh, will want to be named as the charitable beneficiary of the charitable remainder trust. And then also the nonprofit 
uh, will enter into the purchase and sales agreement with the trustee of the charitable trust to purchase the property. So thank you for being a part of today's teaching on the win-win strategy of, of using uh, tax strategies to maximize gain for, for churches, ministries, and nonprofits to gain territory, and then also for the seller of real estate to avoid uh, and minimize and eliminate the capital gains tax on the sale of, of real estate and also how to maximize wealth transfer for generations. This has been Glenn Reppel. Thank you for being a part and listening uh, to this teaching. Our phone number here is 407-339-9090. We have advisors and financial advisors all over the country that are able to help and assist uh, in, in transactions like this. Uh, we want uh, to see churches and ministries grow and, and leave a lasting legacy. We sure appreciate your time. Thank you. God bless you.